in my terms, at least, we're going to have to hoard some cash because you're going to run up against that debt ceiling. It's not happening yet. They're talking about it in July. Give us a sense of how cataclysmic it could be if, in fact, we stepped over it. Well, I appreciate you. you you'll use those as your terms. That's not those aren't those aren't the words that I would use. But look, if this is uh, you, you have it exactly right. This is very simple. This is not about new spending. This is not about new investment. This is about the United States governing government honoring the obligations that prior Congresses have already made. Uh, it's a sacred obligation, the full faith and credit of the United States. And Congress is going to have to deal with the debt limit and do so without conditions, without games, and without putting our economy at risk. Look, that's something that has happened multiple times uh, under different presidencies and different uh, parties controlling Congress over the last several years. They're going to need to do that again, because part of what we want to accomplish in 2023 is keep making progress, keep make, making progress on bringing health care costs down, bringing prescription drug costs down. But the last thing that we can afford is to violate the Hippocratic Oath by having a self-inflicted wound on the economy. As you say, Brian, this is not about uh, spending new money. This is money that's already been agreed to be spent, uh, is being spent. Uh, but let's talk about possibly spending new money. Uh, you're not predicting recession. I'm not saying that you are. But you must be taking that into account as at least a possibility. As we hear, some of the banks are predicting that. What is your plan B when it comes to that? Do we have fiscal headroom left? Because historically, my understanding the playbook is if we turn into a recession, we look to fiscal stimulus. Do we have any leeway for that if that happens? Well, number one, I think that the, the recent data should give us more confidence that we can actually make this transition effectively. We're doing it in real time. Number two, a number of the pieces of legislation that we enacted in, the, in, in 2022 are really going to start to kick in. So one of the important things for us is effective implementation, getting uh, money on the ground to encourage greater investment in semiconductors, and in clean energy manufacturing, as I mentioned, lowering prescription drug prices. Those are all things that our effective implementation can affect the real economy in 2023. And I would say beyond that, I think the Inflation Reduction Act last year gives us a good playbook. We can invest in ways that reduce prices in the economy, reduce costs for families, and reduce the deficit at the same time. We surely can do that. And there are areas like, for example, making child care more uh, inexpensive for middle class families that would boost labor supply, help on the labor supply side, help get more people, more uh, parents and women uh, in the workforce. And we could do that sensibly while also reducing the deficit at the same time. So there's definitely policy playbooks for us to continue to make progress, continue to sort support this transition. We're going to have to work and see whether we can build the pol political coalition, whether Republican leaders are going to want to work down, work with us on those kinds of things that have had bipartisan support in the past. We saw 